Hello everyone! Now, let's look into what quality of governance is. We talked about governance, a vector of objectives, which is the vector of goals, and so on. But what is the quality of governance? Let's start by looking into conflict situations. In the crowd elite society, conflicts of particular governances constantly come up. This is when one person thinks one way, but another person thinks another way, and so on. And a ruler has to be able to evaluate the possibility of winning in a conflict situation according to the formulas I, he, I, they. This ability is worked out, formed in practice, life. And this ability is formed in today's global civilization, based upon memory, but not prediction, foresight, which in its turn is based on the sense of measure. To put it another way, people reason on the basis of the knowledge they have. Meanwhile, foresight is always based on the sense of measure. What consequences of that do we have in society now? If a loss takes place one out of ten times, a person behaves with restraint. If one in a hundred cases, he behaves independently. If one in a thousand cases, this person, who is in essence a crowder, bravely engages in any conflict on the principle I am the smartest, I am the greatest, I know it all. Supposing the predetermined possibility of winning is a hundred percent, but in fact this possibility is equal to 0.999. Such people are particularly dangerous as a permissibly conflicting crowder acts according to his own capabilities, but when encountering someone with higher capabilities, he loses. Thus, he brings himself as well as others trusting him to ruin. From this standpoint, if we look at businessmen in Russia, we can see that this also concerns them. At the beginning of Perestroika, they believed that they could easily achieve anything. But later, it turned out that they didn't take into consideration global politics or the financial credit system, regarding themselves as die-hards, thinking, I can do anything. I always get what I want because I have such abilities and possibilities. But when encountering someone with higher abilities and possibilities, they brought themselves as well as others who trusted them to ruin. The same concerns politicians in our country. The sense of measure is an individual sense, and the factor of personality and subjectivity in non-standard situations prevails over the standard education level. If a person in non-standard situations can act on the basis of his sense of measure, but not an instruction, he can win. Or vice versa. If he acts on the basis of an instruction only, he can come to a collapse. Man has the sense of measure for a reason following an instruction which objectively cannot contain all objective patterns situations means putting yourself in danger as any situation is of a unique nature and contains the unforeseen recall the highest hierarchical encompassing governance in people's life so an instruction cannot fully serve as a prescription for life that is it cannot replace life itself Many of those who strictly follow instructions perish in non-standard situations that require non-standard, extraordinary solutions. There cannot be an instruction for every single situation. It is important to underscore that man is not gifted with an ability to create an instruction for every situation. As man is restricted in this, he, therefore, is gifted with a sense of measure, so that he can find an adequate solution, but not remain a zombie by a robot who thoughtlessly follows instructions, regardless of whether it is suitable in the given situation or not. 
This is pretty well demonstrated by the well-known case in the USA, on which the film Sully, Miracle on the Hudson was based. The captain of flight 1549, Chesley Sullenberger, made an emergency landing of Airbus A320 on the cold waters of the Hudson in New York. All 155 people aboard survived. In spite of the delight of public and mass media, an investigation was launched, which jeopardized the reputation and multi-year career of Captain Sullenberger, who essentially made a non-standard solution and saved all the passengers. After that, the zombie bureaucracy attacked him with lawsuits because he had saved the people, but not acted according to the instructions. Thanks to God, after all those lawsuits, good sense prevailed, and the pilot was acquitted. The other example. The collision of Bashkirin airline aircraft with children on board on the night of July 1, 2002. A Tupolev 154 passenger jet flight BDC 2937 Moscow Barcelona and a DHL plane, a Boeing 757 cargo jet flight DHX 611 Muharak Bergama Brussels collided in mid air over Uberlingen, a southern German town on Lake Constance, near the Swiss border. All 71 people on both aircraft, two pilots aboard the Boeing and 69 people aboard the Tupolev, nine crew members and 60 passengers, among whom 52 were children, were killed. This disaster was due to an error of the dispatcher of the private Swiss company, Skyguide, which carried out air control. In the air traffic control service located in Zurich, only two aircraft controllers were on duty during that night shift. Shortly before the collision, one of the ATCs went on a break. Only 34-year-old dispatcher Peter Nielsen, who was forced to work simultaneously at two terminals and an assistant, remained at their posts. Some of the control room equipment was turned off, and Nielsen noticed too late that the two aircraft on the same flight level 360, that's around 11,000 meters, were approaching dangerously closely. Less than a minute before their courses were to cross, he tried to rectify the situation and instructed the flight crew of the Tupolev to descend. At that time, the pilots of the Tupolev hadn't yet seen the Boeing approaching from the left but they were ready for a maneuver to avoid collision with crossing traffic. They began to descend as soon as they had received the instruction from the ATC. Seconds after the Russian crew initiated the descent, their traffic collision avoidance system, TCAS, instructed them to climb, while at about the same time the TCAS of the Boeing instructed the pilots of the aircraft to descend. The pilots on the Boeing jet followed the TKS instructions and initiated a descent, but could not immediately inform Nielsen, because the controller was dealing with the Tupolev. About 8 seconds before the collision, the Boeing descent rate was about 12 meters per second, not quite as rapid as the 13 to 15 meters per second range, advised by the jet TKS. As for the Tupolev, the pilots disregarded his jet TCAS instruction to climb, having already commenced their descent as instructed by the controller. Thus, both planes were now descending. Unaware of the TCAS issued alerts, Nielsen repeated his instruction to the Russian crew to descend, thus giving them incorrect information as to the position of the DHL plane telling them that the Boeing was to the right of the Tupolev, when it was, in fact, to the left. None of the pilots informed the ATC on the contradicting commands that they had received. So, the pilots saw that they were about to collide, but they were following the instructions. However, if they had been following the current life-consistent reason in that situation and the gifted to them sense of measure, they would have avoided that catastrophe. 
What conclusion can we make here? Education without affirmation of the sense of measure in a person is meaningless. These concerns and education, school education, higher education, higher education, academic education, and so on. Any type of education is meaningless as it doesn't enable one to correlate knowledge with reality. And this, in turn, makes governance of non-standard situations and even standard solvable situations impossible. What's more, permissiveness generates illusions. But all education, science, culture blindly denies the sense of measure. In reality, people use their sense of measure, calling it intuition, sovest. However, Science and education do not contain all this. Conflict situations may be resolved in two ways. For instance, there exists an object of governance and a few subjects of governance. One of them says the object should be led this way. The second does not agree and claims it should be led another way. And the third one points in a different direction. In other words, they argue a conflict emerges. What do they have to do in this case? Each one of them has to rise to a higher level of understanding to be able to look at this from the outside and following a prompt given by the highest hierarchical encompassing governance, unite all the efforts in such a way as to enable them to bring the object of governance onto the necessary course as previous as possible. There exists another scheme of governance in the crowd elite system. Imagine the same aforementioned situation. But in this scheme, the principle of divide, pit against each other and conquer is operational. Therefore, there are new characters in the scheme who whisper one thing to the first ruler and different things to the second and third. As a result, all three rulers come to failure and the object of governance comes to a collapse. Why? Because only on the basis of stable predictability of process can you solve a conflict situation through the way method acceptable for you. But what way is acceptable then? The way of the global predictor is to divide, pit and conquer, as a result of which they brought the object of governance, the planet Earth with mankind on it, to a crisis, with the risk of a global catastrophe, where nobody will survive. You know, when I was in the military, I had commanders of the following type. They gave orders to their subordinates, but didn't announce the goal as a whole. So, their subordinates didn't know why they had to carry out these orders. They were not aware of the final holistic goal. What I mean to say is that these commanders, without comprehending this, unconsciously implemented the principle of divide, pit and conquer. When I was in the command of a regiment, and my regiment was good, outstanding even, I had the following principle. In the morning and evening, when I set tasks to the heads of services, the commanders of companies, they were all present at the briefing, and they were always aware of the final goal. Moreover, when the briefing was over, they knew what exactly they had to do in order to carry out the set task successfully. That was why the tasks were carried out easily and effectively. As you see, it comes down to mosaics and kaleidoscopes, as in processes of governance, conflicts can be resolved in two ways. One way creates inner tensions, the other one removes inner tensions. On the basis of what we have considered so far, now let's look into quality of governance again. We already know that governance contains certain indicators – a vector of objectives, a vector of current state, and a vector of error. 
all areas of governance are determined subjectively. One says that democracy is good for the country, but another one says that this democracy has already brought the country to a collapse. That is to say, errors are determined subjectively. If all particular errors are within the acceptable boundaries, in this case, these errors form an acceptable set of vectors of errors. The multi-measure of vectors can be large, and it is inconvenient to use this multi-measured vector to compare various processes of governance. For instance, when it comes to governance over a country, in this case, the multi-measured vector of errors should contain parameters of education, economy, healthcare, army, manufacturing, that is to say, the vector of objectives is huge. As a result, it is hard to use this huge informational block. Nevertheless, it is necessary to make an adequate evaluation of the vector of errors. It is necessary to compare these parameters. If any of the particular errors does not go beyond the acceptable boundaries, and the question on the change of hierarchy of the priorities does not arise, then it is better to have one evaluation of the vector of errors, which has to correspond to the binary code – good or bad, better or worse, and so on. Such a generalized evaluation is called a quality of governance. The measure of the vector of errors is a generalized evaluation of all particular errors of governance, which are integrated in the vector of errors. How is it possible not to get lost in this multitude of indicators? All these indicators are grouped. An all-inclusive list of governance goals is created, vector of objectives are divided into groups, and on the basis of each such group, one can make a particular evaluation of quality of governance. For example, metallurgy, shipbuilding, mechanical engineering and the like make up one group. The second group, for instance, can be agriculture and so on. Such grouping enables one to use a lower number of parameters. The whole set of errors further on is integrated in a new vector of errors, as a result of which the volume will be much smaller. This approach is important and can be effective when an object of governance is in the maneuvering mode, when at different stages the generalized vector changes its direction. All of this is also done subjectively, but this enables one to integrally, that is to say holistically, evaluate the situation in this or that field, sphere of governance. The evaluation of such a quality of governance is always subjective and determined by a ruler's nervousness within the boundaries of the conception. A choice of a variety of particular goals is subjective. The hierarchy of these particular goals is also built subjectively. Therefore, on the basis of the same vector of errors, on the basis of different principles, one can make many generalized evaluations on all particular errors. All of this should be taken into account when evaluating different opinions. For example, we summon up experts to make an evaluation of a process. There exists such a method named expert evaluation and each expert expresses a different opinion. But the one who summoned them has to determine which of the experts is right and to what extent measure. How can he determine which of the experts has an adequate evaluation of the given process? Subjectivism of different people towards the quality of governance is more effective, adequate and consistent to life the more correspondent subjectivism is to the highest hierarchical encompassing governance and his design. Only this can help one make a privacy evaluation in order to understand whether one is on the privacy path 
or not. How can man achieve this? Man can achieve this through the sense of measure, gifted to him by the Creator, and also through stability in terms of predictability. The latter means that if a person succeeds in what he does today, tomorrow, and for a long period of time, there is no failure. This means the person is on the previous path. From this standpoint, history of mankind is very important in order to see which actions, deeds of people in the past led to the positive, private results, and which actions and deeds led to erroneous, unprivate results, to see how stable these or those processes were, so that we can avoid the same mistakes by taking into consideration the experience of past generations, not only in words, but in our daily activities. All this sounds simple, right? But in life it is not that simple. Why? Because people are stuck, have drowned in their practical, not openly announced, atheism, which in our civilization consists of two types, materialistic and idealistic. This is what we already discussed in our previous lectures. All the affirmation means that the most previous one, also in terms of his decisions, is the one who co-measures correlates his intentions to God's design. The highest quality of governance is reached in the case where man's vector of objectives corresponds to God's vector of objectives, his design. Now, let's look into what a cycled, enclosed-circuit system of governance and a conception of governance are. We can see a cycled, enclosed-circuit system in the picture. It is an example of a driver and a vehicle. In this example, the system of governance ruling is the driver. But in other examples, it can be a more powerful system of governance. For instance, a government or a technical system. The object of ruling in this picture is the vehicle. There exists a feed-forward line, a feedback line, the environment, a result of ruling. The environment is under some impacts, and the environment exerts impacts on the object and subject of governance. Inside the system of governance, there can exist the system's own inner lines, inner feed-forward lines, inner feedback lines, the way it is between state governance and its departments, ministries. What's more, one should always remember that Governance and reflection are always interconnected, interwoven concepts. Governance is an informational process which is of an oscillatory nature and represents a reflection. Now, let's correlate these two pictures like this. We see that there exists a certain vector of objectives, a vector of current state, and a vector of error of governance. Therefore, a subject of governance, an object of governance, an environment, which exerts its impact on the system and object of governance. Feed-forward and feedback lines, all together with vectors of objectives, current state and error, represent a cycled, enclosed circuit system. And now, after all this, let's formulate an exact definition of what governance ruling is. Governance ruling is a holistic and ordered complex of actions of different kinds, carried out by the elements of the cycled enclosed circuit system, that is to say, the hierarchy of circuits and contours of circulation and transformation of information in the process of implementation of a conception of governance, objective goal-oriented function of governance. Governance is an entire holistic function, and the removal of these or those stages from it makes governance impossible, makes the conception impossible to fulfill. Now, with this deeper conceptualization of governance, let's look into structural and structuralist governance. The cycled enclosed circuit system as a whole and its parts, the system of governance, subject of governance together form a structure. 
the structure is subordinate to the vector of objectives and contains the objective goal-oriented function of governance. The quality of governance is ensured by the architecture of a structure, its functional workload including channels of informational exchange, and an ordering of its elements, organization, hierarchy. The characteristics of productivity, level of functional utility of elements, their qualification levels. The architecture means such a workload distribution between elements, so that the most qualitative governance can be achieved. The military structure of governance is quite effective. However, the structure of governance always directly depends on goals of governance. Speaking of state governance in Russia, they do not carry it out according to the entire function of governance. They just do some shuffling in the structure of governance, changing some committees, departments, agencies with new ones. Meanwhile, the architecture of governance must ensure a high quality of governance. Productivity of governance is characterized by the level of functional utility of the elements constituting the system. To put it another way, the system of governance has to be made up of professionals who have to know what they rule over, what they govern. This is why rulers must be trained so that they can understand processes of governance in order to be qualitative rulers. The quality of rulers in the state apparatus of Russia leaves much to be desired. The architecture of the structure must be aligned with the vector of objectives. Errors in structure building, which cause general inconsistency, can nullify a high functional utility of structure elements. We already looked into the structural way of governance. So, in the structural way of governance, a structure is created before the governance process begins. An architecture and an element base are not changed during governance. But if they are changed, this change is only of a corrective nature, the correction of errors of the system. Functionally oriented information is distributed directly to the elements of the structure. What's more, an ordering of the structure architecture and the elements, for instance specialists, has to ensure the usage of maximal potential of every element in particular and the whole structure in general. Otherwise, mass potential can remain unopened. A capable and talented person will just waste his time. Or to the contrary, the one who can hardly do anything can be entrusted with such tasks that, in fact, he doesn't bring any results although he carries out many functions in the structure. To put it another way, there has to be proportionality, co-measurement based on the sense of measure. In this lecture, we have already talked about the fact that no instructions can describe a person's life, as it is multifaceted and has so many nuances. An attempt to fit life into the framework of instructions, laws and other man-made boundaries and restrictions is a useless and pointless endeavor. There is another important aspect. It is the placement of elements of the structure. There can be two variants. All elements of the structure in full force are located on the object of governance. Some elements of the structure are located outside the object of governance. In this situation, a particular case of governance is a remote governance. This is when executive elements of the structure are placed on the object of governance. The elements, which can be sacrificed without any detriment to the structure, or which are impossible to retain. These executive elements can be robots, machines of different types, but also state bodies of a country. For instance, the state apparatus of Russia is an executive element, body of remote governance over our country, who in many cases do not even understand that they are just an executive element, 
through which remote, from a distance, governance of our country is carried out. The global predictor prefers to rule countries and nations not directly, but indirectly, by passing information mainly through structuralist methods of governance. For instance, they set a certain program in our people's minds, the ideology of Marxism with an informational mind, and by robots in our country blindly followed it. This is an example of ruling of predetermined nations, when an acceptable level of governance quality is achieved. That is to say, stability in terms of predictability is achieved. Now, let's look into a new concept – super system. What is super? It means over and above. That is to say, a super complexly organized system. In this depicted slide, you can see what super system is. A super system consists of a plurality of similar elements. Every element has memory, on the basis of which this element can self-govern. This element can pass information to other elements, thus exerting a governing impact on other elements, and can also receive information from other elements, thus gaining a governing impact towards itself. The ellipsis here means that the super system applies to more elements than what you see here. The super system through its elements spreads much further. The term super system is taken from computer science and computing machinery, where super systems are created on the basis of certain elements. I had to deal with super systems, I'm a specialist in super systems. You might guess that in the Baikonur Cosmodrome there are very complex processes of rocket launch preparations, launch control, ruling, and so on. The same concerns satellite control from the Mission Control Center. All this is a very complex, super complex super system, where a large quantity of computer machinery is applied. In super systems, governance proceeds through the spreading of information of ruling nature, due to which the informational state of elements changes. As you might already have guessed, mankind is also a super system. Now, correlate this scheme with man's society. Every one of us has a head that has memory, on the basis of which we can self-rule, pass information to other elements, receive information from them through books, phone conversations, mass media, rumors, and so on. Therefore, those laws patterns and accumulations on the operation of super systems that we have in science can be applied to mankind. Structuralist governance is also included in the following. When information is fed into the super system, the information begins to spread over all the elements of the super system. This information of a ruling nature can be fed to one element who in turn will spread it to the rest of the elements. And through different chains, this information spreads and has a governing impact on the entire super system in general. And certain elements in particular, according to their current informational states, at the moment those elements receive information of a governing nature. When spreading certain information, you can bring a super system to the goals you have determined. Circular passing, spreading of information subordinated to certain statistical characteristics contains a probabilistic predetermination of change of the informational state of elements memory, which leads to a change of statistical characteristics of elements self-ruling. Circular addressless passing of information of a governing nature, a certain informational algorithmic module, through elements of a super system will lead to the fact that elements of a plurality on the basis of self-governance will unite into one structure or a few structures oriented towards the vector of objectives in accordance with the informationally algorithmic modules. Within an acceptable span of time, this structure or a few structures will have the process of governance 
the vector of error within which will not go beyond the acceptable boundaries. This is what we are doing now. The KOB, the conception of social safety, is that very special informationally algorithmic module. Now we are making an educational cycle of video lectures, which will be spread around society. People will be considering, pondering on the essence of all this information, they will be sharing this information and might create new relevant structures. Thus, there will be an addressless circulation of information all over the super system, and a vector of objectives is implanted in this information. What is the vector of objectives? To be short, every person has to become a human with a capital H in order to open his genetically determined potential and fully implement it in life. Particular goals are to contribute to such an organization in society that can orientate manufacturing and economy towards ensuring demographically conditioned needs of all people without any anti-human restrictions and exceptions, create an appropriate educational system, solve ecological problems, and so on. In general terms, the goal is to bring people's lives into coherence with God's design in all facets and fields. In the structureless way of governance, a plurality of similar elements in probabilistically predetermined way generate enclosed systems, which we have already discussed before. Those cycled enclosed circuit systems are corresponded to the determined vector of objectives and a plurality of acceptable vectors of error. It is useful to go back to structural governance once again. A structure is created before the beginning of the governance process. The structure architecture and the element base mainly do not change, and information is spread addressingly, directly to elements. As for structuralist governance, a structure is formed not directive addressingly before the beginning of governance, but a structure emerges in a probabilistically predetermined way during the process of governance, mainly on the basis of addressless circular spreading of information. For example, they fed certain information into the society of pseudo-Christianity, presenting their distorted teachings of Jesus Christ as the true ones. And the structure that we call church now was formed in a structural way. Based on the aforementioned, a plurality of elements itself is a cycled enclosed circuit system of hierarchically ordered contours of feed-forward and feedback lines, the architecture of which is changed during the process of governance. An environment which generates within itself structures in the process of self-governance. To put it another way, structureless governance is a ruling of statistical characteristics of mass phenomena on the basis of dominant over a plurality of elements, probabilistic predeterminations of storage, transformation and dissemination of information. Let's look into the examples of structural and structuralist governance. Let's take a bus without a ticket conductor and a bus with a ticket conductor and compare them. Goals of governance – providing tickets, collecting fares, announcing bus stops. If there is a conductor on a bus, it is an implementation of structural governance. If there is no conductor, it is structuralist governance. The goals of governance, depending on the way of governance, are not changed. So, the vector of objectives remains the same. In the structural way of governance, passengers themselves pay a fare, find out from each other about the next bus stop, or, in some cases, a bus driver can announce bus stops. In the structural way of governance, it is a conductor who fulfills these duties. Now, I have a question. Which way is better? It depends on how you look at these things. In other words, it is pure subjectivism.
If you look at this from the standpoint of the public transport authority, it is one situation. If you look at this from the standpoint of the city municipality, it is another situation. From the standpoint of the state, it is a third situation. Let's ponder on this. A conductor has to be paid. Besides, ticket composers are of use. But first, in order to produce them, metal needs extracting, then paper for tickets needs producing, and so on. But what if you make public transport free of charge, to make it so that a bus driver is well paid, and passengers behave well on the bus? In this case, there is no need in cutting down trees to produce ticket paper, no need in extracting metal to produce ticket composters, turnstiles or cameras in order to watch passengers. What's more, operators are needed for watching passengers, whom you have to pay. If one thinks properly, this is complete nonsense. Which way is better? This, in fact, depends on the conception of governance. As we have touched upon this, here is some information to consider. Let's look at the growth of the crime rate in Russia. They accommodate in structural and structural ways, but mainly in a structural way. For this, they expand departments and ministries of internal affairs. They install cameras all over public places, which takes a lot of money from the budget. Many firms and companies have to invest a lot of money in security systems, having burglar alarms, steel doors installed, employing guards, anything in order to make the security system more reliable. So much money is invested in these metal things and other technologies. Now, here is another method. This is what we offer, based on the sense of measure. All the money invested in security systems, turnstiles, fences with barbed wire has to be allocated for education, an increase in teachers' wages, building qualitative scholastic institutions of all types, schools, universities, colleges, and so on. But the most important thing is not that we have to teach our children to protect themselves from gangsters but to cultivate in them privacyness. Together with education, we have to conduct nervous ethical upbringing and so on. Now, a question is, what is cheaper and quicker to implement? Think for yourselves. But all this is completely another conception, which needs to be introduced and fulfilled. It is an entirely different life arrangement on Earth. According to the present dominant conception, divide, pit and conquer, there exists a and crowd and shepherds who hurt everyone. According to the private conception which we offer, all people are people who are above money and other metal things. And every person is unique. He contains, contains in his soul, a unique mission, a unique genetically determined potential. And the most important task is to create appropriate conditions enabling everyone to fully open his genetically determined potential. Every person's life on Earth has a divine meaning, as every person is God's child. This is an absolutely different approach. With this approach, all these security systems, turnstiles, CCTV cameras and so on, will be of no use. Looking at Russia, we see that prison romanticism is flourishing. Bars on windows, barbed wire around firms and companies, cameras, etc. So many resources. It is horrible. In order to be more certain that the private conception will win, you should first understand such a phenomenon as automatic synchronization. In mass phenomena, flowing in nature at the most varied levels of hierarchy, one can often encounter phenomena of coincidence of the phases of identical processes, frequencies, and other characteristics of processes, 
simultaneously ongoing in a multitude of similar objects. Such phenomena, for instance, are coherence of light emission by atoms in the laser, synchronous outbreaks of many fireflies in the meadow, synchronous deviation from danger of a flock of fry, synchronized rowing of athletes on multi-oared boats. For example, in the past, slaves were given the rhythm of rowing on boats with the sound of a drum, and rowing athletes now already sense this rhythm through their bifelds. Heart rate cells, pancreatic insulin cells, a group of crickets chirping in unison, neural ensembles providing a rhythmic activity in the brain, and many other phenomena of automatic synchronization. Automatic synchronization is often present in processes of structuralist governance. Structuralist governance itself can be built on the basis of use of automatic synchronization. For automatic synchronization the following is necessary. A plurality of elements has to have, at least partly, an identical or similar informational state. The plurality has to be in conditions where an informational exchange, at least addressless or circular, between elements is possible. The speed of response of passing information from one element to another has to be sufficiently fast. Here is another example of automatic synchronization. Everybody knows it, but hardly anybody pays attention to it. For example, it is characteristic for halls where a warmly beloved leader makes a speech. In our country, a good example of this was when Leonid Brezhnev expressed in a speech the wise idea that the economy must be economical. Shields started applauding after these words, and then the crowd thoughtlessly followed suit, shouting out, Hooray! Hooray! and couldn't stop. They did it in a single voice, a single burst of emotions, and couldn't even stop. At this point, the shields could leave the hall, and the crowd would go on applauding. The same concerns performances of singers, musicians, different public personalities, etc. By the way, it does mean that these shields are special, selected people. It can be people who, let's say, follow the dictates of their hearts, as a result of which the rest are doing the same. Thus, they thoughtlessly work for certain goals, which sometimes can be minor, but sometimes not. What is a clapping of hands? It is the passing of one bit of information. But what if it is the conception of social safety, instead of a clapping? Then, depending on the response in people's hearts, the conception will also cause automatic synchronization in society. Maybe not that fast, though. Feeding information into society in a structural way, one can achieve goals which are embedded in this information on the level of information by announcement and by default. To put it another way, one can create a more complex module which contains a large volume of information. Become a generator of automatic synchronization and activate the passing of information in the supersystem of mankind. When having a certain structure of governance, which operates according to the entire function of governance, one can structurelessly govern those processes which executive bodies of another country cannot govern. In the society of mankind, the potential of automatic synchronization is a kind of grand piano in the bushes, with the help of which one can suddenly play performances of stock fever, dollar or oil price drops, presidential elections, civil war, mass epidemics, pandemics, and so on. But the same principle can be applied in order to implement another conception. Let's look at this picture. 
The blue arrow is a subversion of the West towards Russia, according to the principle. Why do you live like this? You don't have enough democracy. You should have Western ideals, like the BBC, Voice of America, chewing gum, jeans, and your life will be good. Go ahead, switch to the Western lifestyle. In this vein, I should remind you that information can be of three types. Information by announcement, information by default, information by initiation. Information by announcement is information that is announced in one way or another, in oral form, in written form, in visual form, and so on. Information by default is information which escorts information by announcement. Information by default always goes together with information by announcement. Information by default is manifold, more volumetric than information by announcement. There exists no information by announcement without information by default. But information by default can exist and actually exists without information by announcement. Proceeding from this, information by default is primary in relation to information by announcement. Information by announcement crystallizes from information by default, the same way as structural governance crystallizes from structuralist governance. Information by initiation is in a certain way encoded information within specific groups. For instance, mafias can have their own languages of communication between clans. Such languages are used by behind-the-scene mafias, clans, special forces, and so on. These systems of coding of information are understood only by those who are involved in these clans in one way or another. Every clan representative is aware of codes due to his hierarchical status. People who are out of these groups do not understand these kinds of languages and may perceive these languages as an ordinary course of events. For instance, they tell us that we will live well according to the Western ideals. This is information by announcement. Meanwhile, the information by default is we will be parasites on you Russians. Information by initiation is information used by clans, mafias, masons and the alike in order to inform each other through the system of certain symbols. That is why, in order to understand information by initiation, everyone should understand symbols and not brush them aside as if they are nonsense. This is what the aforementioned people want. They want ordinary people to take symbols as nonsense. Informing through symbols also takes place in open sources. Symbols, signs and other attributes is the language in which a large volume of information is encoded, the language which is hidden from the crowd, in spite of the fact that it is accessible and open for the crowd. Those who state symbols do not represent anything and their interpretation is for idiots are supported by clans as such people ensure clans invisibility of different kinds in society. Going back to the topic, automatic synchronization was activated among our people in Russia to push them into working for the goals aimed against the people themselves. The goal by announcement was to build a prosperous democratic future, but the goal by default, which was actually achieved, was to pull our country down right into the sheet. We used the same principle to implement the conception of social safety in life. The KOB is being spread all over our country. Originally, it came into existence in St. Petersburg. People began to study and master the conception of social safety all over the country. We began to publish the works by the internal predictor of the USSR, 
the collective who write these books on the conception. We also publish newspapers and do other things. I myself travel around the country, give lectures, meet people. We have the KOB, the conception of social safety, everywhere on the Internet, Russian politics. By the way, Putin is also aware of the conception of social safety. The authors of the KOB are ex-cadets of Suvorov military schools, founded by Stalin himself. The descendants of cadets also brought treat this fact with a great deal of respect. People are aware of the conception of social safety in Venezuela, Japan, China, Vietnam, because it is the conception of social but not national safety, as Russia combines within herself around 170 nationalities, peoples. In addition, on Earth, there are other nationalities, the English, the Spanish, the French, Koreans, and so on. The question is, according to which conception will we all live? Now, we all live according to the conception of divide, pit, and conquer, as a result of which all people and nations have daggers at each other's throats. Some state, Jesus rose, some state, Alakbar, other state, Karl Marx and Rosa Luxemburg are the best people on earth. And this principle is fulfilled not only on the level of religions, nationalities, politics and so on, as you may think. Do not delude yourselves, i.e. by default, erroneously supposing that things are fine on the level of interpersonal relationships. It is not like that. The same things happen to people belonging to the same nationality, the same factory, firm, company, to people of one family, relatives, etc. This happens everywhere, on all levels with no exceptions, on the interpersonal, ideological, familial, political and other levels. There are no exceptions. People are divided. Those who cause this rub their hands together. However, according to the law of time, this principle divide and conquer, operates against its creators and supporters. We declare another principle, unite and prosper. We remove contradictions on all levels. On the level of religions, for instance, we demonstrate what part of the Bible is from God and what part is not. Before, I gave you examples of the wisdom of Solomon and the prophecy of Isaiah. The conception of social safety removes ideological contradictions, helps improve interpersonal relationships, and so on. And this information slowly but surely is coming to people's minds. That is to say, the process of automatic synchronization is being fulfilled. When all this reaches a critical mass, a critical point, all this will move into a completely new quality. Now, let's look into how governance can be conducted. The first scheme is program governance, when governance is carried out strictly according to the program. There are an object of governance and a system of governance. The object is in an environment. However, the system of governance is concluded in the following. There exists a feed-forward line, according to which the object follows the set program. Meanwhile, the system subject of governance is not interested in the feedback line, not concentrated on it. Moreover, the subject of governance does not take the state of environment into consideration. A typical example of such governance is a missile launch. When it is launched, a tape transport is activated. A tape transport is a mechanism that contains a program according to which a missile moves. First, a missile moves vertically, then it has to incline in pitch. 
After that, other parameters are activated strictly according to the set program. Weather conditions, wind and other environmental factors are not taken into consideration. The missile starts and operates strictly according to the set program. However, the missile is under the pressing impact of wind, for instance. When the wind blows, the missile can divert. There are also other pressing impacts, the quality of fuel, for example, as a result of which the engine operates at a lower thrust than the estimated. Consequently, the missile diverts and misses the target, the object is not destroyed. As far as you can see, program governance can solve tasks, but it is not that effective as feedback is not taken into consideration, as there is no feedback line, that is to say, different pressing factors of the environment like winds, for instance, the behavior of the missile and other disturbing effects are not taken into account. Past states of the object are not taken into account either. Present states are partly taken into account, future ones are totally ignored. In other words, this governance does not contain any prediction. Flexibility of governance and object behavior are almost completely absent. As a consequence, the quality of governance is low. If we look into governance of this kind using the example of society, then in the history of the USSR, we can find an example connected to Nikita Khrushchev who gave everyone an order to plant corn. In doing so, there was no feedback. Many things like low harvest in the north, that corn does not grow in the north, in fertile lands, impacts of the environment, etc., were not taken into consideration. Consequently, the results of this governance were miserable. There is another type of governance program adaptive way of governance. This is a more effective one. Here we have the same scheme, an object of governance, a subject of governance, feed forward and feedback lines, and environment. In this scheme, past state's behavior and present behavior of the object, feedback and environmental impacts are taken into consideration. Let's draw an analogy with a missile launch. Imagine a missile and a satellite moving. The missile has to take down the satellite. We have an estimated trajectory, which also takes the parameters of the satellite movement into consideration. The missile starts, and it has to follow this track, dash line, in order to hit the satellite. There also exist feedback lines for feedback, indicators to read the influence of the environment, such as winds and so on. So, what is missing in this way of governance? Here is what is missing. Imagine that a missile has been launched. Under the impact of wind, it diverts. The system of control ruling puts it back on track, course. But, due to its weight, the missile passes the estimated distance and diverts off track again. The system of ruling puts it back on its track again. As you see, the missile constantly has diversions, fluctuations. It goes without saying that the quality of ruling has grown in comparison with program governance. However, those diversions, inertia, lead the missile to miss its target so that it hasn't taken down the satellite, although the quality of governance is much higher in this case. To put it another way, the major error of this ruling is that there is no prediction. The governing impact from the side of the subject of governance always lags behind, is always late. The missile diverts and only after that a governing impact begins. Now, let's move to the third scheme, predictor-corrector. Many Russians ask why these foreign words were used for the name of this scheme, as well as in other parts of the conception. 
The thing is, the conception is of global significance. It is not only for Russia, but for the whole world. Actually, the word predictor corrector is taken from mathematics. Predictor corrector methods belong to a class of algorithms designed to integrate ordinary differential equations to find an unknown function that satisfies a given differential equation. In other words, this method enables one to predict and liquidate errors which can emerge in the process of a task conduction. Let's study this scheme. Here we have an object of governance, a subject of governance, feed forward and feedback lines, environmental pressing factors on the object and subject of governance, and the entire process of governance as a whole, past and present states of the object of governance. All this is taken into consideration. But the most important thing about this scheme is that the future is predicted and prognosed. The system of governance has a specific component, a program adaptive module, which carries out governance according to the entire function of governance, a prediction and prognostic function, detects errors in the process of governance and corrects governance. In order to understand how this scheme works, we can take an example of all mankind. Where is mankind moving? There are no fluctuations in this scheme, unlike the previous one. Conceptually powerful people make a prognosis in this scheme, and mankind is told where to go. Mankind moves to a certain point where the predictor makes an analysis on the state of the object, mankind, and the predictor analyzes whether mankind is moving in the right direction. The corrector detects certain errors and inaccuracies on the basis of which he conducts a correction. Afterwards, mankind moves on. At the next stage, a certain correction of actions is conducted again, and so on. What do we see in this scheme? This scheme excludes fluctuations and diversions. What do diversions mean in people's life? Let's look at our government, which moves back and forth. But this is the fate of millions of people's lives, their wages, the fates of their children, etc., including fluctuations such as war, peace. What are they doing to us? One day it's war, the next day peace, now a crisis, now an epidemic or something else. Now we have come to a conclusion that we, Russians, do not know what kind of life arrangement we are building. That's why the country is moving back and forth, up and down. Speaking of reforms in education, it is pure idiocy. For instance, the Unified States exam contains questions like where does the river Volga flow in England, Germany or Russia? I'm exaggerating, of course, but I think you see what I mean to say. And a student has to put a tick next to the correct variant. This educational system is different from the one we had in the USSR when a student answered any question of this kind without any offered variants which one could actually guess by chance, at random. In the present system of education, a student doesn't have to know anything. He can just guess through the method of analogy, deduction, which variant is correct. But if you ask the student a question without any offered variants of answer, you will see his real level of knowledge. So, first, the Unified States exam was introduced then cancelled, after that introduced again. It is pure dementia. Those fluctuations which you see in this scheme look harmless, but in real life these fluctuations mean the fates of people. Having looked into all these schemes, every one of you should decide yourself which scheme is more previous for governance and life. I have a question. 
Do our state bodies, departments and so on, in all their diversities, possess the skill of prediction and correction? This is not even integrated in the conceptual circle of their understandings, concepts. They don't understand this at all. Going back to those schemes, I should say that the quality of governance is the highest in the predictor-corrector scheme. Why? Because an error in the process of governance is gradually liquidated before it can cause damage to the process of governance. But the predictor-corrector scheme is based on the sense of measure, which is inherent, natural for all people. All I said concerns heads of firms, companies, factories, etc. Anyone can use this scheme to conduct a prediction of event development and correction of governance if errors and inaccuracies emerge. Now, let's shift this theoretical but life consistent scheme onto practical things, such as the influence of the financial credit system political situation, demographic situation, the common cause of things, etc., up to the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. Only corresponding, co-measuring their activity to the design of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance can people achieve the truly highest quality of governance. But if people do not have this integrated in their circle of concepts, Sooner or later they will come to a total collapse. When will this happen? This depends on the balance of all unique factors of the specific current situation. In Russia, there are many people who consider themselves prosperous, entrepreneurs, wealthy, successful, while their children are useless in various ways. This one is a drug head, that one is an alcoholic, some are just outright lazy and incapable. Further on, a question arises. For what did these rich and prosperous people build everything that they have now? Just to have their useless children let it all go, because of their incapability, or simply because their hands grow from their own place, all this falls into the global predictor's lap. Therefore, I'd like to ask those parents who work from day till night building their businesses and other things, all of which they hope to pass to their children. What is this for? Your children will lose it anyway. Besides, while such parents are always snowed under, they have no time to see what's going on in their children's lives, what kind of relationships they have with people of their age, or to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with them. As a result, having inherited their parents' businesses, these children fool their inheritance away. Why? Because those parents do not take into consideration the flow of parallel processes. So, who wins in the end, in the greater scheme of things? It is the global predictor who wins, as they deal with processes beyond the lifespan of five generations. That is to say, they make a hundred year, a hundred and fifty year plans and more. But ordinary people like those parents are just interested in daily hustle and fuss, beyond which they cannot see. This is why people have to co-measure their actions, co-measure everything, and ponder on all parallelly flowing processes. I think that this is something everyone should ponder on.